Okay, so yesterday, I think it was, Microsoft had their conference at E3, and these are my thoughts on the games. Let's get to it. Forza 7. I lost interest in track racing games in 2011, and this does nothing to rekindle my interest. Not interested. Metro Exodus. I wanted to be interested in this game because it was—it had a very sort of like a realistic Fallout 4 kind of vibe, uh, you know, minus the RPG trappings and stuff. I've never played a Metro game before, but what turned me off from this trailer was the fact that it was just pre-rendered footage masquerading as gameplay. They must know by now that no one's going to watch that and go, oh, that's what the game will be like, because it's not. But they try to make you think it will be because they give it all the first person perspective and all, all of this shit. But you know, it won't be. Because we've we've been seeing this shit for long enough. It was just, like, so obviously pre-rendered. Everything was scripted. No, fuck that. Fuck that. It, if you want to create a fancy artistic trailer, that's cool. It'll tell me nothing about the game, but that's cool. If you want to make a trailer, present it as, as if it were, this is how the game's going to be. But it won't be that, then fuck you. And that's what this trailer did. So, all I know about this game is that it's set in it's part of the metro franchise it looks like it's post-apocalyptic and you shoot stuff that's all that trailer told me because i don't know how much of what i saw is actually in the game so there's that not interested state of decay 2 i never played the first one and if there's one thing this industry needs more of it's zombie based survival games not interested the darwin project literally nothing about that trailer made me want to buy it not interested. Minecraft crossplay on everything. I stopped caring about Minecraft years ago. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it for, for like for a good hot minute, but currently could not care less about Minecraft. Oh, it's on it's on the Switch, and it, uh, you can crossplay between all these things. Doesn't matter. All that means is I can crossplay between none of them because I'm not going to use it. But hold on a sec. What's this? This super duper texture pack. This H look, look at the fucking crazy graphics on this shit. Wow. Damn, if only I hadn't stopped playing that game years ago, I would give a shit. Not interested. Black Desert. Trailer did nothing for me. Not interested. The Last Night. Kinda looks like a beautiful version of Flashback on the Mega Drive. But not appealing enough to make me want to buy it, so there's that. Not interested. The Artful Escape. Again, a pretty 2D side-scrolling game that I'm sure I'd finish once and go, huh, that was neat, and then never play again, so... Not interested. Code Vein. That sure does look like a hack and slash game. Not interested. Tacoma. As far as trailers go, this is about as bad as it gets. It told me nothing about the game other than it's called Tacoma. What kind of game is it? Where is it set? What What is the gameplay like? How long is it? What's the story? Is there a story? It tells you nothing. They just like, there's a game called Tacoma and it exists. They may as well have used those words on the screen because that's the information I got from it. Not interested. Super Lucky's Tale. Look, this is probably going to upset a few people, but I'm not six years old, and this isn't the mid-90s, so why the fuck would I care about a cartoon fox doing side-scrolling platforming, or even 3D platforming? It looks so basic as well. It's not like, it's not like it just, oh my god, it just, the trailer did a bad job of making it look like it's anything other than just jumping and collecting coins. That's all it looks like. The best game that never needed to be in virtual reality. Not interested. Ashen. That trailer didn't get me excited. Not interested. Life is Strange Beyond the Storm. Hey, look! Look, the most powerful console in the world has games that look like they came from the PS2 on them. If you're going to tout your console, oh, well, the most powerful console ever made. Have a look at this game. Looks like it was made on PS2. Six teraflops! Didn't care about um the first Life is Strange. If you're going to have... I've got nothing against narrative-driven games, like a play Heavy Rain and all that business. Great games. But you have to fucking, like, make an effort. Maybe they're a tiny, tiny indie team, and they are. this is the best they could do, but... You know, if your game consists mostly of humans interacting, I'm gonna want them to look good. I'm gonna want the environment to look like, yeah, I can get sucked into this world. Not, oh, I thought we left this shit behind 20 years ago. Which is a silly thing to say, because the PS... Two. It wasn't 20 years ago, but it's not far off. Fucking hell. Not interested. Ori. Ori. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Didn't play the first game. Um, people say it's good. Probably is. I just looked at it and I was like, it's very beautiful. Very beautiful. 
It is just a 2D platformer collecting glowing orbs, though, isn't it? And it's like, when I was a child, I played that sort of thing on the Mega Drive all the time. I played 2D cartoony platform things when I was a kid. Don't care for that shit anymore. They've got their market. That's cool. But I'm not interested. Not interested. Now that I've got all the shit that didn't impress me out of the way, let's have a look at some of the shit that, well, no, no, I'm not going to say impressed me, but it got me interested. Assassin's Creed Origins. Right, now. Just destroyed my laptop. I have most of the Assassin's Creed games. I'm up for a little bit of Assassin's Creed every now and then, you know. They've had a couple of years to off, well, I say a couple of years off from making them. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully it's just a case of they've, they've had a couple of years off from selling them. Hopefully they've been making they've been making use of that extra time. Anyway, um, yeah, looks looks fun. I'm just hoping they use that that extra time to to make it feel a bit more fresh and put a bit more polish on it because you know Unity and Syndicate kind of made them take a year off from releasing these games because they thought hmm maybe we should have some sort of quality assurance going on here. I just need to play Unity, which I've had for months and not played it, and buy Syndicate and play that. And then I'll buy this game. It's just a shame it won't look this good because I am playing it on my regular PS4. I'm, I'm not going to buy a PS4. Fuck mid-generation consoles. Fuck them. Make a new console or don't. But this is the way of the future, isn't it? When the PS5 comes out, should I just wait three years and get a PS5 Pro? What is this bullshit? So anyway... I'm going to buy this game, but it won't look as good as the trailer I'm looking at now. It makes me sad a little bit. It doesn't make me sad too much, because if it, 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 if it really made me sad a lot, I would just be a PC gamer. Also, why the fuck? When do they... When, right? Who asked for Egypt? Who? Not me. But I'll tell you what people have been asking for. They've been asking for it since they've been hinting at it in 2007. Feudal Japan. Who doesn't want to play Assassin's Creed in the time of Japan and... The time of Japan. The time of samurai and ninja. It's custom made for assassins, but they're like, nope. Egypt, because they've got weird hook sword thing that probably didn't exist. We just made it up for the game. And we can also have an owl that, like, lets you see shit. I guess, you know, when you've got the owl flying up and it can mark people and see them through walls and shit. Yeah, I think I'm ready to throw away the last bit of expectations of realism I may have had for this franchise. Not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. If it makes the game more fun, that's the most important thing. So I'm buying this game. It's got me interested. And I have to commend Ubisoft for this. I never thought I would commend Ubisoft for their trailer work. Because fucking hell, they're pretty much the reason that trailers... I almost lost my ability to be impressed by trailers. Or, or be excited for games based on trailers. Because of that Watch Dogs business years ago. But they did it perfectly this year. They showed a cinematic trailer. right? It didn't pretend to be gameplay. It was just clearly scenes picked from cutscenes in the game. Made into a cinematic trailer. That's cool, because they then followed it up with about 10 minutes of gameplay. Actual, just straight up gameplay. Not, you know, I'm sure it was it was scripted to a point, but it wasn't like some of those cringy games where they have people come in and pretend that they're not acting. They're like, oh, hey, Johnson. Yeah, yeah, let me, oh, no, we need two more people for this uh, for this boss. Let me just, let me just get, you know, Carlos and Reese in here. There they go. Okay, they're all ready to go. They were just waiting in the party, not actually playing the game. They were waiting for their cue to come in, because this is how real... This is how the game actually plays in real life. No, I'm looking at you. Can't even remember your name. Anthem. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Anthem. With your shitty trailers, with your cringe... Like like, like The Division. Like... Ugh, I'm, this video's taking too long. Anyway, so they played a cinematic trailer and then a gameplay trailer. Good. Ubisoft, I like it. Keep doing that. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Nah. Initially, I wrote this game off as just another one of those, like, H1Z1's fucking cheap-ass, half-broken, not-finished, survival-bollock rubbish games. But then I saw a lot of people play it. <clears throat> like, my boys over at Game Attack saw them play it, and I was like, actually, I, th this looks like there's something to it. Looks good. And now it looks like it's going to be an Xbox exclusive, so I won't be able to play it because I don't have a gaming PC. This is a laptop, and I'm not buying an Xbox One or a One S or a One X, which is... As dumb a naming convention as the Wii U. As dumb. Do they not realise Xbox One S and Xbox One X sound so fucking similar? Over the phone, you probably won't be able to tell the difference. But whatever, they must know what they're doing. So yeah, I'm not going to be able to play that. Unless it does come out on the PS4 eventually. But hey, I'm interested because Xbox need more exclusives. And this this is a good one for them to get. So fair play to Microsoft for the, for, for the get, as they say. Deep, deep, blah, blah. Deep Rock Galactic. I didn't learn much about this game. Just watching the trailer, it was just 
looks like trolls digging in caves and stuff kind of like minecraft but with a little bit more detail and there's uh, stuff you can find like treasures and you know you could encounter hordes of enemies and things it it doesn't sound good the way i'm describing it but the trailer made it look oh kind of interested so i'm interested in that dragon ball fighter z and at first i was like oh wait a another dragon ball z game i played one back in the day on the ps1 and i think that sullied my well no that didn't sully my uh my my perception of the rest of the games and like a budokai series or something i don't know um, but I've I've seen people play Dragon Ball Z games in recent years, and they look like fucking trash. But this one isn't a stupid trying to be like the show, fly around in 3D, it's a bit ambitious for us, we're not good enough to pull it off very well kind of game. They're just going, what's Dragon Ball Z known for? Fighting. What have all the best fighting franchises done? I was going to say stayed 2D, but some of the good ones have been 3D. Anyway, it's a 2D fighting game. Why didn't they do this from the start? It looks good, okay? You know, I watched a bit of the show. I'm not going to get into that. Looks good. I'm interested. Sea of Thieves. This is another game that looks cool. And based on the first trailer I saw, I didn't think too much of it because I thought this is one of those very, very scripted things where you've got the people come in and they've all got their lines. To, oh, it's just not good. But this one, it seemed... It was it was still pretty scripted. But it, they, did, they weren't trying to pass it off as... This is what an actual group is like when they're playing it. It's just weird. They were basically showing you what you can do. They're like, hey, you know, you can... Go and go to this treasure island and find you use a use a map and solve the riddles and find the treasure and go underwater and do this and fight skeletons and do that and board their ships and climb in cannons and go flying. And it looked good. It looked it basically took the idea that looked good in the first trailer, but the present but the presentation wasn't very good. They took the idea and put it in some in, into some potting soil of better presentation and outgrew this trailer. It was a very good trailer, so interested in that, but probably an Xbox exclusive. Fair play to them again if they've got this. Cuphead, yeah, okay. Uh, a mere four years after they announced this game, they finally announced its release date. If you've not seen the trailers for Cuphead, go see the trailers, because the animation style is... It's basically from, like, the old... Four, I don't know what era, the 40s, 50s, 60s, the really old, like, uh, like sort of Disney War, uh, uh, Warner Brothers cartoons, like, really old style. Very familiar. It's instantly familiar style. Everyone knows it from their childhood. But I don't think I've ever seen a game incorporate it and it looks it looks like someone's playing a cartoon it's really gorgeous but the problem was when they lo when they announced the game it was just going to be boss fights that's all it was and everyone was like what do you mean it's just boss fights where's where's the game and then they went um come back to us in 4 years so 4 years later they're like and here's we made up some levels to go in between those bosses and now everyone's like looks great i'm interested probably won't get it cuz it'll be exclusive but Looks great. Crackdown 3. Right, never cared about the first two games. I saw them and I was like, oh, they... No, I saw my friend playing one of them and I was like, doesn't look like a high quality game. And that was to my detriment because as far as I know, it could have been a great game. There's been plenty of games when I've gone, doesn't look like a high quality game. And then it's blown me away. Like X-Men Origins Wolverine didn't look like a great game. And then I played it and I went, this is actually a really good game. I'm a fan of Terry Crews. He was in the trailer. And I'm a fan of Ultimate Destruction. Two of the best games I ever played were Mercenaries and Mercenaries 2, where you could just literally call in airstrikes and blow up any building you could see. It was amazing. And this game, apparently, is all about unlimited destruction and shit, so, hey, it's got me interested, at least. And if, if it wasn't for the destruction that's got me interested, it's just the fact that last year they showed this, and then I... Oh, they showed a bit of it, and then, like, the year before they did, and everyone keeps going, where's Crackdown? I thought they were talking about Crackdown. So I, it's got a bigger following than I initially thought, so it must be, there must be something to it. So I'm curious, they have my attention. And so on. And finally, Shadow of War. Oh my god. Shadow of Mordor, I didn't get it at first because I thought, oh, the graphics look great, but it does just look like an Assassin's Creed clone. So I eventually picked it up for cheap last year, and I give it a perfect 10 out of 10, and I don't bandy that around lightly. I think it was a flawless game. <laughs> it was, uh, it was so very good. If it did have a flaw, it was that it gets kind of repetitive as it goes on. Because it's basically... I mean, if you go into the game with the understanding that it is an orc massacre simulator, you're good. You're golden. Because it's great. Everything about it was top quality. I mean, you know, the story story was okay, passable. I'm not... 
you know, I do like Lord of the Rings and everything. I'm not big on the lore. So, you know, I couldn't tell you where it's canon, where it's not, if it is indeed canon. But I'm not going to buy the sequel for the for the, for the the story. I'm going to buy the sequel for the Nemesis system, which I think every game like this should have. It's fucking amazing. And it looks like they've vastly expanded the Nemesis system, which is double thumbs up from me. Because that was the best part of that previous game. And they've vastly expanded. It looks like the main focus. You basically build an army. Oh, this game's an insta-buy. So I'm buying it. So, it's interest. And that is everything that interested me and didn't interest me in uh, Microsoft's Microsoft's press conference. So, the next video will be probably Sony's or Ubisoft's. I don't know which order these are happening in. They just happen. And then I'm like, I'm going to talk about them. So, there we go. Thanks for watching and all that jazz. I just turned my microphone off because I'm an idiot. Peace.